long spines going down its back and a beetle-like head and, and little pointy teeth. Chupacabras have been seen all over the place. There was something in the water which conferred longevity um, on animals that may well be applicable to human beings or, or other types of animals. The further back you go in time, the, the stranger the dog becomes. It has one eye, two eyes, it howls, it drags a chain. Have some Australian cattle found a magical elixir of life? And just what are the phantom black dogs of Britain? Animal X uncovers the weird world of animal mystery. First, we head to Mexico to investigate a strange creature known as the goat sucker. They say it stalks the countryside, preying on defenseless animals. It only strikes at night and has an insatiable thirst for blood. It'll stop at nothing, even attacking humans to satisfy its needs. I, I know what I saw, and this is what it was, a creature. Three fingers. The first finger here was much larger than the rest of the fingers. Long spines going down its back and a beetle-like head and, and little pointy teeth. This is the only photograph of what Spanish Americans have christened the chupacabras or goat sucker. Animal X went to Tucson, Arizona to find out what struck fear into the heart of the Spanish community. Since the first reported encounter in Puerto Rico three years ago, sightings have increased dramatically, with some as far flung as New York and even Moscow. Few have followed the chupacabras trail as closely as independent investigator Ted Lohman. The growing weight of evidence has turned the riddle of the goat sucker into a personal obsession. I've gone back into a number of reference books to see if there was something like this that I could refer to back in history. Could this spend years, possibly uh, tens of years, or maybe even hundreds of years hibernating until something uh, that we don't know awakens it and then it finds itself trying to survive uh, on, a, on a place that uh, has really no uh, recollection or no idea how to do that. Whatever its origins, Chupacabras has become a byword for terror south of the border, where attacks are on the increase. A woman from Mexico claims this Mexican woman claims she was attacked by a Chupacabras after it went on a livestock-killing rampage. He grabbed me right here. He wouldn't let me go. I fought with him, but he wouldn't let me move my head. The twin puncture marks first seen on animals said to be killed by the goat sucker were found on this man after he says he was jumped by a chupacabras along a darkened country road. In Puerto Rico, this kind of media coverage has aroused such fear among the general public that many are afraid to leave their homes at night. One local mayor has even organized a chupacabras hunt. One of the most recent sightings was at this suburban Tucson home. A man claims the creature entered the house early one morning, passed through the kitchen, and sat on the bed of one of his young sons. He's convinced what his son saw was a chupacabras. And he described it that it had big red eyes and the ears and the beak, and it was the same thing that I had seen. Then I realized that we had it inside the house. Tucson Police Department. A police investigation into the incident found the son's description entirely consistent with previous sightings. Uh, any other distinguishing features? Uh, large red eyes. And we took the we took the report as a as a true and real life sighting of some kind or or activity and made a suspicious activity report on it. It said it was about three feet tall. It had long arms, no legs, um, had a beak and a uh, bright red nose. And, went, and uh, when they said that when, the, when the, the creature came into the house, it smelled kind of like a, a wet dog. Jim Griffith is a folklore expert at the University of Arizona. He's been following the growing chupacabras cult in the US and abroad since the first reported encounters. He agrees there's no logical explanation for the goat sucker phenomenon. Chupacabras have been seen 
all over the place, and there are a lot of people who absolutely believe that there are chupacabras. Uh, I think one school of thought feels that they're diabolic. Another school of thought feels that uh, that they're mysterious animals. For Joe Uria, the specter of the chupacabra still haunts him more than 30 years after the day he came face to face with his worst nightmare. At play in the backyard of his Tucson home, Joe realized he was not alone. I felt something looking at me. I turned around, saw this creature's head. First thing that ran in my mind was to go ahead and, Joe, you better run. And I did. And as I did, I kept looking at the creature. First thing that I saw was his eyes, and, and then its head. And uh, I noticed it didn't have any ears. And it, uh, it looked like it was neither real tall or it was standing. And uh, anyways, as it looked at me, it looked at me like a very, I don't know, uh, like it wanted me to come over there to him. Like he, it seemed like I was his, he was the predator, I was the victim. With the US media jumping on the bloodsucker bandwagon, there's more speculation than ever over the existence of the chupacabras. Eyewitness accounts continue to pour in from around the globe, but is it anything more than the product of mass hysteria? Experts believe that the growing number of sightings makes the mystery of the chupacabras impossible to ignore. There has to be a reason behind the phenomena. I don't think that there is enough investigation on this animal yet to compile enough information to find out exactly where it comes from, where it lives, what's its purpose. Maybe in the future, if something is trapped or captured, um, then we'll be able to know. While the debate continues over the chupacabras, in Australia, scientists and farmers are searching for answers to another puzzling mystery involving cattle. Animal X went to take a look at the so-called magic cows. Imagine if we could all live to the ripe old age of 150. Bear children into our 60s and 70s. Have twins, triplets, even quads. Now in Australia, discovering that magic elixir could be closer than we think. And the clues are coming from the most unlikely source. Animal X traveled to New South Wales to visit the Monaro region and the mysterious cattle that defy the laws of nature. They look like everyday cows. Most cows are gone by the time they're nine or 10 years old. But Aussie farmer Wendy Haynes' daisies are definitely different. The oldest cow here at the moment is 22 years old. Gunya Loyal the 80th had her last calf just a couple of years ago. In human terms, that's like having a baby in your 70s. I do know that Wendy has cows that have had regularly had calves up until the age of 15 years. Cows have lived to 23. And that's like us, living to about 150. There can be little doubt there's a strange secret lurking beneath this cattle country here in the shadow of Australia's snowy mountains. Scientists have been here to investigate and they're not saying what they've found. Here, the country they call the Monero is tough. When the winds are blowing, temperatures plummet well below freezing. Julie Johnson, Wendy's neighbor, runs an Angus stud. It's the same mysterious story here. Many of these animals are living more than twice their normal lifespan, still producing offspring at 18 or 19 years of age. What's more, there's an extraordinarily high number of multiple births. When you get to having as many twins as we've had in cattle, that really is an unusual thing. Solving the mystery could be significant for all of us. The biochemistry of old age in cattle is much the same as in humans. Finding out what keeps these cattle alive 
could give us all a longer lease of life. In the nation's capital, Canberra, in a small anonymous building belonging to the Department of Health, months were spent testing and probing samples. Usually after samples are taken, scientific theories are made public, but in this case, the mystery only deepens. The scientists won't talk. Oh, I think they're keeping things pretty quiet. One of the most plausible explanations floating around seems to be in the water. All of Wendy's uh, stock are fed from spring water, which come from some deep down in the ground. The water table is getting lower, and uh, whether that's a factor or not, um, I don't know. Millions of years ago, volcanic eruptions covered this area with basalt, lava rocks rich in minerals. Local springs contain a chemical cocktail of calcium, magnesium, iron, sodium and potassium. All our water supply on the, on the place is um, from underground springs. They've served generations of long-living sheep and cattle, but not local families. They've tried to run it into their homesteads, but the water is so loaded with minerals, it destroys the pumps and the pipes. If the water is the key, the scientists aren't letting on. There was something in the water which conferred longevity um, on animals that may well be applicable to human beings or, or other types of animals. But if the cows have discovered a magical elixir of life, they're not alone. Wendy and Julie also run sheep on their Monaro properties. It seems that they too are also living long and fertile lives, and some of these ewes are 17 years old. When, and if, the scientists release their results, we may finally discover the magic of the Monaro, and maybe, just maybe, the elusive secret to a long and healthy life. Australia's magic cows present an intriguing tale. After the break, we investigate another one, this time with more frightening overtones. Britain's phantom black dogs have been seen for centuries. Animal X speaks to those who claim to have had a ghostly encounter of the canine kind. I got my head down biking towards work and uh, I suddenly heard a chain rattling on the road like a dog pulling a chain along. And uh, when I looked up, there was nothing there. Welcome back to Animal X. Dogs may well be man's best friend, but that's rarely the case when it comes to the phantom black dogs of Britain. Sightings are often followed by tragic events. Not so surprising, really, these canines are said to be in league with the devil. For some, they're protective creatures. For others, an omen of death. They've even been described as a manifestation of the devil. Whatever their purpose, the phantom black dogs of Britain have appeared in many shapes and forms. 400 years ago, a demon black dog was even blamed for killing five people as they prayed in a church. Not surprisingly, these phantom beasts have left an indelible impression on anyone who sighted them. The further back you go in time, the stranger the dog becomes, it has one eye, two eyes, it howls, it drags a chain. Um, it takes many guises. The red fiery eyes were the things that stuck in her memory more than anything. I think it was a ghost, which, which a lot of people have seen around here. I think that my sister and I saw it that night. Animal X travelled to East Anglia in Britain, where the legend of the black dog, or old shuck, has its strongest roots and where it's still seen today. We met up with this man, Ivan Bunn, a folklore expert who's collected more than a hundred reported sightings of the ghostly canines. One of his most fascinating cases involves a coast guard at a beach in Norfolk. 
Graham Grant was on duty at dawn 25 years ago when he noticed a huge black dog with a shaggy coat walking along the sand. He said it appeared to be searching for something, not like an ordinary dog, but as though it had a higher purpose. Its paranormal origin was confirmed when it disappeared into thin air. He's convinced that it vanished. He says um, if it had run off into the sea or up onto the sand dunes, then um, he would have seen it go, and he didn't. And um, as a trained observer, uh, you know, I suppose we have to accept the story that he told. At the time, Graham Grant didn't consider the dog to be evil, but later another Coast Guard told him that what he'd seen was a legendary phantom black dog, considered to be a harbinger of doom. Old Shuck soon lived up to its reputation. According to a report from Mr. Grant, shortly after the sighting, his colleague died suddenly at work. Then, just weeks after he told the ghostly tale to his father, he also died unexpectedly of a heart attack. There's a very old tradition that should you see what you think is a phantom black dog, then you should never tell anybody for a year and a day. If you do tell anybody, then that's when the evil befalls you. 40 years earlier, Brenda Bartram had a ghostly encounter at nearby Barnby. She was walking to the post office with her sister at night when she suddenly saw a dog in the moonlight. Assuming it was her neighbor's pet, she tried to get hold of it. When I first saw it, it was, it was just like a retriever dog, you know, black retriever dog. And when I went to get hold of it, to take it home because it, boy was deaf, that just went small. I couldn't touch it. When I went down to get it like that, that, that just went like a, a, a cat. And I stepped back, I was frightened. More than 60 years on, Mrs. Bartram still won't venture out alone at night. She fears the phantom dog could be out there, somewhere. It was around the same time that old Chuck was spotted by another witness a few kilometers away in Beckles. Christine Turrell's mother, Emma, was convinced she saw the phantom canine in her back garden. It appeared out of nowhere and jumped up to look through a window. The dog turned round and brushed past her and she noticed its big red fiery eyes and that ran off down the yard and Dad came out with the torch and put the torch all round the garden but there was no dog and it couldn't possibly have got in or out because there was a six foot wall around the garden then. Right up until she died, Emma Riches stood by her story. That she disturbed a devil dog that fateful night in 1938. Other people in the area say they've only heard old Chuck. One man who contacted Ivan Bunn claimed he was followed by a phantom dog. This dog, which he never saw, apparently got closer and closer to him. He could hear it breathing, he could hear it some footsteps coming through the, the reeds and the grass. Um, he could hear it panting, and the faster he walked to get away from it, um, it, it continued to follow him right across the marshes, and he was extremely frightened by the experience. A few weeks later, the man reported that his son had died tragically. Had the presence of old Shuck been an omen, a foreteller of disaster, most paranormal experts agree that black dogs are more substantial than ghosts, as they often leave physical traces behind, such as paw prints. In 1577, a devil dog reportedly bounded into a church in Blythborough. As the congregation knelt in prayer, it swept through the pews, apparently killing two men and a boy. Another person was said to have suffered burns in the attack. Today, scorch marks are still visible. They are will be offered, are offered is tangible proof that the devil in the shape of a great big black dog visited this church in 1577, did the things that he did and fled through this door and damaged it on the way out. Even the church has given some weight to the story. Its official brochure describes the markings as the devil's fingerprints. Legend has it that another church in the nearby town of Bungay was also visited by a devil black dog. The frightening event is said to have happened on the same day during a violent thunderstorm. 
One written account published shortly afterwards describes how a black dog or a devil in such likeness appeared before the terrified congregation. Panic broke out as the beast attacked two worshippers who dropped to their knees praying for mercy. While church records make no mention of the phantom dog, they do confirm two deaths, but in the belfry. It's claimed the pair were struck by lightning as they rang the giant bells to frighten away evil spirits, thought to have caused the shocking storm. Demon dog or nature's fury? One thing's for sure. After that day, churchgoers took Old Chuck very seriously. There were certainly prevalent notions about the black dog as a very evil figure, and so presumably if anything tragic or disastrous happened in their lives, they might associate that with a sort of black dog figure. Bungie isn't shy about the dark page in its history. Quite the opposite. It plans to commemorate the millennium with a statue of the black dog but not everyone is keen to see the devil creature celebrated in bronze. They say it's a symbol of the devil and that it's an evil thing and we shouldn't be associating it with a Christian millennium celebration. While the debate rages on, there's no sign of it affecting the number of witnesses coming forward. I was going to work one cold and windy morning and I got my head down biking towards work and uh, I suddenly heard a chain rattling on the road like a dog pulling a chain along. And uh, when I looked up, there was nothing there. Mr Jackson says the sound made by the heavy chain was unmistakable and terrifying. His wife is another who agrees that old Chuck is no fairy story. There's obviously something around here. I mean, that's, that's not just coincidence that different people have seen things as far as I'm concerned. So yes, I do believe in the old shuck, whatever you like to call it. For Ivan Bunn, the weight of evidence is too heavy to dismiss. Reported sightings are too common and too convincing. The people that have contacted me, the people that have talked to me, the people that I've talked to, are 100% certain that what happened to them was beyond an explanation, an ordinary explanation, that they are convinced um, that this goose, this apparition, this devil dog, this shuck, whatever you want to call it, was extraordinary for some reason or the other. I, I, and I firmly believe that um, their story shouldn't be taken lightly. No one can really explain the appearance of old shuck, but many are convinced that the lonely parts of East Anglia are home to a phantom creature that looks like a huge dog but has paranormal powers. It's said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. There has to be a reason behind the phenomena. There's something there, but we just don't know what it is.